Have you heard of snus? Snus is a type of smokeless tobacco. You've got chewing tobacco, which is a cured type of tobacco that people for a long time have been chewing on and spitting out. And now more recently, you've got snuff, and snus is a type of snuff, which is basically cut or powdered tobacco that can come loose or can often come in pouches. In this case, in pouches that you're meant to put under your upper lip. And this is very popular in Sweden, but tobacco companies are all in on this and are marketing this around the world now. So you are going to see a lot more of snus. And so we do know that a lot of the, the chemicals and toxins that are created by combusting tobacco, that by burning that tobacco in the cigarette is what creates a lot of the harm from that tobacco. And so chewing tobacco or smokeless tobacco is less harmful than smoked tobacco. And what we're hearing from big tobacco is that chewing tobacco, or in this case, snuff or snus, is a great way to reduce harm, a great way to help people who smoke cigarettes um, to basically get nicotine replacement and reduce their cigarette smoking. The problem is that we heard the same thing from big tobacco about so-called low nicotine cigarettes or low tar cigarettes years ago that they tried to market and that just didn't pan out. We are also hearing the same thing from them about e-cigarettes and we won't know for 15, 20 years what the health impacts of e-cigarettes are. What we also know is that big, big tobacco has claimed that e-cigarettes are great for nicotine replacement and smoking cessation, help people quit. But what they've actually gone and done is marketed it very aggressively to a new generation of people with all sorts of colors and flavors and ads on social media targeting young people, introducing them to a new product and maybe getting them addicted to nicotine. And that's ultimately what happened. We saw a lot of young people starting and then ultimately getting hooked on e-cigarettes. And that's what we're seeing now with snus. It's the same playbook and, and basically the same strategy. And although it is less harmful than smoked tobacco, it is still associated with many different health risks. So there's an association with a higher risk of fatal stroke or fatal heart attack. And then just having that tobacco in your mouth can lead to all sorts of cancers in that head and neck region, including oral cancer, uh, pharyngeal cancer, esophageal cancer, um, gastric cancer, cervical cancer. And we don't even know if in fact it is effective at helping people to quit smoking. There are randomized controlled trials suggesting it it hasn't been effective. There are some observational studies, particularly in Sweden, where this is quite popular, that suggest that it might have a role. But first of all, we don't even know that for sure. And second of all, the way it's being marketed, uh, flavors like Tropic Breeze and Chill Mint, um, it really isn't being marketed uh, to the 50-year-old who's trying to quit smoking. It's being marketed to the young person. And unfortunately, in Canada, it has gone under the radar. It got approved as a natural health product. And as a result of that, there are no restrictions on how it can be sold and who it can be sold to. So basically a 10 year old can walk into a gas station and buy a Tropic Breeze pack of snooze. So the government has really missed the boat on this one. We need them to get it behind the counter. We need them to make sure it doesn't get sold to anybody under 18. And really it should only be sold to people who are trying to quit smoking, who are using it to quit smoking. And even then we need more studies to prove that it can work, but definitely uh, we need this to be restricted because it might just introduce a whole new generation of people to a new addiction with lots of different health consequences.